Former MP, Cabinet Minister and Deputy Leader Lisa Raitt is the co-chair of the uh, Leadership Election Organizing Committee for the Conservatives. She joins me now from her office in Toronto where she's just started her new job as Vice Chair of Global Investment Banking with CIBC. Lisa Raitt, good to see you again and congratulations on the new job. Thanks a lot, Peter. Uh, let's talk about the, the, the leadership uh, uh, election race here in the Conservative Party and where we are. We, we, we saw the entry rules for the, the Green Party leadership unveiled today. $50,000 uh, commitment from the candidates to get into the race, and they only need to sign up 250 uh, Green Party members from across the country instead of the 3,000 uh, members that the Conservatives need to sign up, along with a $300,000 uh, um, investment into the leadership race payment. Uh, were you, your rules meant to, to trim the field of potential candidates? Uh, look at the difference in what these two parties are doing. Well, it was meant to find serious contenders. Um, we have a, a base membership list of about 145,000 Canadians. So finding 3,000 signatures shouldn't be that too much of an onerous deal for uh, for real candidates. And secondly, in terms of the quantum for the for the amount that you put down, it's 300,000. 100,000 of that is a compliance deposit you get back mm -hmm. if you behave and if you follow all the rules. So it's 200,000 in and of itself. And we think that's the right amount for somebody who will conceivably be the Prime Minister of Canada. You were one of the 14 candidates in the last leadership race. Was the lesson from that race that the field was, was too big and needed to be narrowed? From my perspective only, not speaking on behalf of LIAC, I can tell you that there was no incentive for you to leave the race once you were in it. Once you put in the amount of money that you put in, there was really no reason why you wouldn't just stick it out to the end. And that's why we ended up with all of these debates that had so many contenders on the stage that you really couldn't get a chance to measure them for their medal. And right now we have two candidates who have uh, made it through their first hurdle, that is making sure they have their thousand signatures in and their first installment is in. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at a lot of other candidates who say that they are going to be able to put together the amount of signatures and the amount of money, and we look forward to welcoming them to the race as well, should they succeed. Yeah, well, time will tell whether they can actually meet those mm -hmm. thresholds. But over the weekend, we saw uh, the Peter McKay. You, you touched on the candidates who've, who've made the, uh, uh, met the requirements, say they've got the money and the, and the, uh, the uh, member support. Peter McKay's already paid the entire deposit and already collected the 3,000 signatures. And I guess some people are already wondering uh, about a possible leadership coronation here. How concerned are you about that, and is that good for the race? I, I don't believe that um, that anybody within our movement right now is really seriously thinking that we're going to be having a race that isn't going to be competitive. I mean, we have already Aaron O'Toole is in the race. Peter McKay is in the race. There's many more who are saying that they're going to be entering the race who are being covered in terms of media, what their policy positions are. And all of this discussion is just really good for the conservative movement and for the party themselves. And people can make up their minds as to which candidate they're going to be voting for. No one is sewed up. Everyone still hasn't, they don't have their ballot in hand. They haven't made a final decision. So people can say that what they think is going on. The reality is there is a race and there's going to be more people, I believe, that are going to be successful in entering the race. And I look forward to the debates that follow in the spring. Do you think there's going to be more people than those that we've already heard from? I don't see why not. I take every candidate at their word that they believe that they're in it for the for the long run and, and that they're going to be attempting to hit the hurdles. Remember, the first hurdle of, of being able to put in a hundred thousand or twenty five thousand dollars in a thousand signatures. That's not a significant hurdle. They should be able to do that and move on to the next one in order to get the list to, to reach out to membership. And the final hurdle is the one that happens at the end of March. And after that, you are going to be included in any debates that go forward and you'll be on the ballot as well. Right. As you've been watching this race unfold here, we, we start to see a bit of a, a narrative taking place uh, with uh, you know, sort of the different leadership candidates and, and, and some of the party members talking about what it is the party really needs. And we're hearing about red Tories and, and, and blue Tories and the grassroots and, and growing the tent and, and, and how you do that. Um, what are you thinking as you hear that debate about whether the party needs somebody who might uh, broaden the tent by attracting, you know, uh, the suggestion that Peter McKay would be liberal light uh, versus Aaron O'Toole as the, the true blue Tory? Uh, what do you think of that conversation? Well, I think what Canadians and what Conservatives are seeing is that people are positioning themselves as to what kind of leader they are, and you're getting a choice. You can choose 
amongst the different types of conversations that are happening with the different candidates. And I would say John Williamson has also expressed interest and certainly Marilyn Gladue has expressed interest. Derek Sloan has been talking about uh, what he believes in. And I believe that um, people are going to be able to take a look at all the different kinds of conservatives. We are very much a big tent organization. People have different points of view. And that's what a leadership race is all about, Peter. It's about putting what you believe in on the table and trying to convince members that this is the path to take to be a conservative and to be a conservative government in this country. Okay, can you tell me where your committee is, and, and as much as you know about this, uh, is in the process of vetting candidates for the party leadership. They have to fill out this 45-page questionnaire. What's the purpose of that questionnaire? Well, it's no different than if you were going to be a candidate in any real party here in this country, that you make sure that you give up as much information as asked by the party to determine whether or not you're suitable to be a candidate to carry the banner of the Conservative Party of Canada. And that's the same analysis that's happening with the leadership as well. Um, the committee, the subcommittee of LEOC that meets after this application has been submitted, after the signature is submitted, after the money has been submitted, will have serious questioning of the candidate. And the reason being is that you want to make sure that there's no surprises and that they match up with what are the tenets and the principles of the Conservative Party of Canada. It is a real test to go through this. It is not something that's a rubber stamp. Just because you raise the money and just because you produce the signatures does not mean that you're going to be a candidate. It's taken very seriously. Mm -hmm. And we have gone through this process twice so far, once with Aaron O'Toole and once with Peter McKay. And I can't comment on anybody who else who may or may not have submitted their application and are in process because until we say that they're a candidate, they're just not a candidate. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, we do have Mr. DeCarey from Quebec who says he wants to be a candidate. And you know his comments from a couple of weeks ago that uh, uh, being gay is a choice and that if he's prime minister, he'll reopen the same-sex marriage discussion with a view to making marriage once again the exclusive domain of, of a man and a woman. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know if... I, I guess you're saying he hasn't gone through the vetting process yet. Has, hasn't been questioned if that's true. Uh, but on the face of it, the comments he's already made, don't they exclude him because those are at odds with party policy? Well, that's going to be a decision of the subcommittee of LEOC who does the testing. And they, they ask serious questions of the candidates. They determine whether or not they have all the information they need to make a decision. And the, this, this committee isn't about screening potentially to get rid of people in the race. That's not what it's about. It's to make sure that the candidates that put forward adhere to the Constitution and the principles, and they line up with the values of conservatives. So it's that kind of a check. It's not an attempt to try to find that gotcha moment that somebody should not be a member of the race. It really is to tease out and make sure that we all understand that as the leader of the conservatives, you're going to be upholding the Constitution and what it means. And there's more than one person on this committee, Peter. Mm -hmm. So that means there's going to be a variety of opinions on it. And I would leave it to the committee to have any discussions on the interpretation of the Constitution and, and comments that are made right. in but, the application. But, on, but on the face of it, if Mr. DeCarry was to repeat those comments in an interview after filling out this questionnaire and, and repeat what he said in public to this uh, subcommittee, wouldn't that disqualify him? I'm not going to prejudice what the committee is going to be deciding if and when they have an application of any of the other candidates in front of them. It's really tenuous to, to try to figure out what's going to happen with the committee. It's, I believe that it's their decision. They're the ones that are going to be face to face with anybody who fills out the application and they'll be making the determination. So I'm not going to say what they may or may not think in a hypothetical. I'm going to let them do their, do their work that they've been asked to do by National Con Council of Conservatives. All right. Uh, Lisa Raid, always good to talk to you. Thanks for your time today and uh, we'll get a chance to talk again. Appreciate it. You bet. Thanks, Peter.